Good evening, church. Good evening. Good evening. You are welcome. Our uh, sacred scripture will be coming from Psalms 117. We only have two verses there, and we need to shout it out because the Lord has been so glorious to us the last two nights, and I know he's going to bless us on the final night. So, so when you have it, say amen, and we'll read it together. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Woo! Deacon Williams going to lead us in prayer. Good afternoon, Corn Valley. It's a pleasure to be able to be back here another time. Father God, you said when we pray, to pray ye our Father, who are in heaven, yes. hallowed be thy name, yes. thou kingdom come, master let thine will be done, yes. in earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive as we forgive our debtors. Lead us, heavenly Father, not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. Yes. For thine is in your kingdom, the power in all of your glory. Heavenly Father, tonight, the maker and the creator of every living thing. Father, we come this afternoon almost as we know how to come. We come, Heavenly Father, saying, Master, we thank you that you laid us down last night. Your heavenly angel watched us while we tossed and turned all night long last night. And early this morning, Father God, you stretched our heart this morning. You woke up this morning still clothed in our right mind. Woke up this morning with our minds still standing on Jesus. Woke up this morning, Heavenly yeah, Father, we still yeah. had a roof over our head, Father. Still had food eating from this to our body. Heavenly Father, you took care of us all day long, Father. No hurt, harm, or dangers come to us. Now, Father, you got us back to the house of prayer one more time. We can say, Father God, we thank you, God, because you have been good to us, Heavenly Father. You have brought us from a mighty, a mighty long way. Father, we are here tonight. Lift up the name of Jesus because your name is worthy to be lifted up, Father. Without yeah. you, Father, we couldn't make this train of Father. But God, you've been good to us, Father. You have brought us down through many dangerous toils and snares. You have brought us, Heavenly Father, to see two months of this year, Heavenly Father. We realize, though, God, we had many heartaches these, these first two months, Father. But God, we don't know what's going to happen the next ten months, Father. But we know we keep our hands in God's hands. Everything's going to be all right, Father. Because you use God with all power in your hands. That's why we look to you this morning, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, bless and God, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, because you let your darling son went to the cross. He died just for us, Father. He took all our sin up on his shoulder. He took him to the grave with us, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, you said you laid me down, Father. Oh, God, they stretched our Lord to you out, Father. But they dirt up all from the ground, Father. He said, I'll draw all men unto me, Father. Oh, God, they took them out to you, Father. Oh, God, thank you for Jesus Christ, Father. Oh, God, they turned them high, Father. They stretched them wide, Heavenly Father. They put a crown of thorns around him. Father, it nails in his hand, nails in his feet, Father. Oh God, he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they're doing, Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus, Heavenly Father. Oh God, you hung between two thieves, Heavenly Father. Oh God, one said, Father, when you come into your kingdom, will thou remember me? He said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise, Father. Oh, that's the God we look Father. We're looking for a God this morning that can do all things but fail. He's a God that can heal your body this morning. If you got pains in your heart and your body this morning, Father, God can heal your body, Father, because He's a healer, Heavenly Father. I know he's a healer because he healed me so many times, here, Father. I didn't come to show my own. I come because you call you because you in my heart, yes, Father. Yes. I come because I need you, Father. Oh God, bless the afternoon, Father. Yes. Oh God, realize you got many this morning. We got many in hospitals sick today, Heavenly Father. We got many that come to this home, Father. Oh God, bless you, keep me your care, Father. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the choir, Father. And they come singing your song, Father. Let them sing out their heart. Let them sing that word, you know, one more, Father. Oh God, bless the music, Father. Father, yeah. and to play your word, Father, Father. Oh, God, bless the choir of your word, Father. Bless the one who's going to stand in John's shoes and preach your word to a dying world. Let the world know what side you're on, Father. Oh, God, we have the Holy Spirit, Father, in our lives, every day of our life. We are going to come on a mighty long way. We didn't come this far on our own, Father. But you love the Father when all your things are to stay. Because you said, seek you first, the kingdom of God, all your righteous. And all these things shall be added to Father. We are seeking the God to see you, Father. We are seeking the call you, dear, is our God, Father. He is our Father. Father, Heavenly Father, we call him every day and night, Father. Oh God, when he days, Father, we're going to come down here in this journey. When this warfare is all over, Father, we know we got a home somewhere in your kingdom. All these blessings, ask in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. 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 Am
great and greatly to be praised. Now y'all, this is day three. And I don't sound like this every day of the week, but we didn't got through it. We didn't get got some magnificent, wonderful praise. Hallelujah. 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 I wasn't gonna let no hostess or no devil stop me from giving God the praise. Amen. Amen. Anybody know that your God is great? Yes. Anybody believe that God is great? Yes. Anybody know without a shadow of a doubt that God is great? Yes. Hallelujah.
is our God And all will see how great How great Say is our God Is our to our 71st annual revival. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's meet and greet. together for the Lord. Amen. When I was growing up, we used to say, if you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. Amen. 
Come on, let's just take about 15 seconds and give God some praise. Come on, let's just take a few minutes and give God some glory. Come on, if you got a praise in there, go ahead and let it out right now. Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Come on, touch somebody else, tell them, I feel better already. I feel better already. Come on, find somebody in good mind, open their mouth and tell them Jesus is in the building. Come on, find somebody else and tell them, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Just a few more seconds. Hallelujah. He's working. God is good. Come on, look at somebody who's had not moved at all. Tell them this is a celebration. Come on, tell them this is our birthday celebration. Come on, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Jesus, 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah, God is good, and all the time, come on, just tell somebody, it's good to know him, 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 it's good to know him. It's good to know him. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. If you can. God is awesome. Yes, he is. He's awesome, God. And we praise God that he has been faithful to us in spite of ourselves. It really is of the Lord's mercies Amen. that we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness to us, Lord. Uh, we thank God for, thank you, Sister Imani. Let's give Sister Imani a hand. Where did she go? I don't see her. Oh, there she is. What's up, girl? make sure it's a part of vision 2025 that we receive we want to make sure that every generation vision 2025 is connecting every generation to Christ and his church and 
We live in an age where people want to be connected to Christ, but not to his church. Amen. And even on last night, we heard uh, you got to be born again to be a part of the church. And it's impossible to be connected to Christ and not be connected to his church. And so we want to make sure that every generation understands that. Amen. And so come on, let's give Sister Imani a hand again. Thank you. And our youth did a wonderful job leading worship on this past weekend. And uh, it's good. It's good. We have three miracles in the house. I think we just ought to point them out. Uh, I know that you all saw me carrying a baby around here. Happy. That's little Kenzie over there. Come on, let's thank God for her. Amen. And where is she? Where is she? Where is she? That's the little baby we've been praying for, y'all. Look at her. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. And then there was an incident on last night, and we thank God. Uh, I told uh, Bishop Felton that uh, uh, his favorite uh, uh, his member, uh, I think if she could join his church, he would. Uh, every now and then I walk in the office and I look around for a picture of me uh, and there's no picture of me in there and, but it's a picture of her and my pastor and uh, we thank God for this woman who has been uh, pressing her way right in front of us uh, this uh, age of the church we get sniffles and uh, we stay away from church for about six months uh, but she has been carrying everything to the Lord and bringing herself to church. Let's thank God for a miracle among us, Sister Celestine Williams. Let's thank God. Come on, let's thank God. got some projects for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then uh, I was hoping he would make his way here uh, about a month ago or so. Uh, one of his preachers had come by and I think Deacon High and I were in the vestibule and he was telling us that his pastor had been ill and uh, he wanted us to pray for him. And the pastor of the Solid Rock Bible Church, people will put you in the grave and you'll be standing right in the back. Let's thank God for Pastor Alvin Hackett. Come on, let's give God some praise for another miracle. Amen. Amen. Love you, man. Love you, man. And it's just good to see us. I'm sure he has a heavy heart as his pastor went on the glory. We celebrated Dr. Chapman on uh, this past uh, Saturday. Let's thank God for Elder Tolliver, David Tolliver. He's here. And other ministers uh, who are present. And we want to thank God for our very own Minister Thomas Gurley. Let's thank God for him. He, uh, uh, Sister Dumas, didn't you celebrate a birthday recently? Is that right? Wave your hand, Sister Dumas. Come on, everybody just holler, happy birthday. Happy birthday. thank God for her contributions to this church and our worship team. We're hoping that we can get another Black History play out of her next year. I don't know if she still <laughs> loves us to do that for us. Amen. So I'm just dropping the bug now. Amen. Yeah, but we thank God for her. It's preaching time. Come on, tell somebody it's preaching time. Preaching time. And, um, God is, uh, has been really good to us uh, to have this um, vessel here with us. God's been kind to us. And the Bible reminds us that we ought to be careful uh, to entertain strangers uh, because you could be entertaining an angel without even knowing it. Um, the Word of God says that a prophet is without honor in his own house. And we thank God that uh, Pastor Felton uh, is not just honored but loved here at the Growing Valley Church. Amen. Amen. And we thank 
you, Pastor, for being here with us. Uh, it's busy schedule and to come out and see about us and and it uh, means a lot. Uh, you all know to me, but I think it means a lot to you too. Uh, that this caliber of preacher would come and share with us what thus saith the Lord. Uh, God has smiled on us uh, for the last two nights. Just by a show of hands, who's been praying for tonight? Who's been praying for tonight? Amen. Just stretch your hands toward Bishop Felton and say, Lord, use the man of God. Use the man of God. Use the man of God to your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. The Levites of Grand Valley are coming to lead us a little further. And that is, is our custom here. We'll stand and receive our evangelists for these three nights. Uh, Bishop J. Lewis Felton. <laughs> Just 
us to this time and to this place. For this is the Lord's doing. Yes. It is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We thank God for this wonderful occasion. 71 years in the witness of this congregation for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you that you have so graciously smiled upon us. We thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient. We thank you for your tender mercy and loving kindness. And inasmuch as we in the very presence of God, every need that we have will be met because we in the right place at the right time. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We certainly are thankful to God for this 71st church anniversary revival. The Lord has been good to us. Anybody agree with that? Amen. God has been good. And we are honored to be a part of this tremendous celebration in the city of Lancaster, California. Now we actually have a Lancaster in Pennsylvania, uh, but it's nothing like the Lancaster in California. Lancaster in Pennsylvania is a nostalgic place. Uh, there's a group of people there that uh, are so nostalgic that they believe more in the past than they do in the future. And uh, that is why they don't drive these automobiles that we drive. They still have horses and buggies. And they stay to themselves. They don't mingle much. Uh, they are a strong uh, Amish community. Uh, but in Lancaster, California, it's a much more forward-looking, progressive uh, kind of mentality. Uh, we are thankful that not only is it that growing Valley Baptist Church is in Lancaster, California, but it's on Lancaster Boulevard. So you're right in the heart of the action. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. You're on the main drag. And we thank God for this wonderful pastor, Pastor Jacob David Richardson Johnson. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Johnson. We are grateful that the Lord is using you in this wonderful city. And we thank God for First Lady Sharon D. Johnson. God bless you. We appreciate you and love you. We have been compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses throughout this week, uh, beginning on Monday in Los Angeles at uh, the Los Angeles Baptist Pastors and Ministers Conference. Uh, the president is here again on tonight. We appreciate you, Dr. Aaron Duncan Sr., uh, for your hospitality and kindness and support, Dr. Tolliver, and to all of these pastors and ministers, each one of you, Everybody is somebody at Growing Valley, so uh, in as much as everybody is somebody, uh, then everybody name ought to be called. Just look at someone next to you and say their name. That's right. Say the name of the person next to you. Say it loud. All right. Amen. We don't want anybody to leave here tonight and say they didn't even call my name. Uh, we want to recognize you and celebrate you. Because you are somebody in the kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. The 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 50 through 58. Let us read these verses together in unison. In fact, I see that you're already standing. Uh, 15th chapter, 1 Corinthians, verses 50 through 58. I'm reading from the King James Version, but whatever version you have, let's blend it together. Uh, now, this I say, brethren, 
that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. For the sake of emphasis, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50, 57, and 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We want to talk for a few moments from this subject, the witness of the church, a stable influence in a volatile society. The witness of the church, a stable influence in a volatile society. Thanks be to God for the setting for uh, this uplifting passage of scripture. For Paul, most challenging apostolic assignment was to the church at Corinth. And of course we know that the church at Corinth was not Paul's favorite church. Uh, his favorite church was the church at Philippi. And he made no secret of the fact that he loved the church at Philippi. Paul said to the church at Philippi, I have you in my heart. He said to the church at Philippi, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. And every time that I pray for you, I make request of you because I get joy every time I think about you. Why is it that Paul loved Philippi more than Corinth? Well, the profile of the church at Philippi was one that we can say was his first impression of preaching on the European continent. You and I recognize that as far as the church's DNA is concerned, uh, there is much more Africa and Asia in it than Europe. For the first 500 years of the church, it was Africa that literally rocks the cradle of Christianity. The first church councils are in Africa. The early church fathers 
Augustine, Origen, Athanasius, all of these great influences of the church are from Africa. The direction of the church is set by the African continent. Obviously Jesus was aware of this because Jesus spent years in Africa. He went to Africa out of necessity for Herod tried to kill Jesus shortly after he was born and God wanted Joseph and Mary to have enough money to get Jesus to Africa and sustain them while they are there so God wrote a headline in the sky put a star in the sky and wise men from the east saw it and came to Jerusalem and committed a diplomatic insult by walking into the king's palace speaking to the king on a throne with a crown on his head and a scepter in his hand and said we want to ask you a question where is the king and of course you can understand the rage that filled Herod when he was insulted by wise men now if these had been court jesters and comedians it would have been a different story but whenever wise men look at you with a crown on your head, a scepter in your hand, a royal robe, sitting on a throne, living in the palace, and ask you where the king is, they're sending you a strong message. For the star had led them to Israel, and then they thought they'd just get a little advice. We know the king ought to know what's happening in his own country. Uh, but the king had no idea because he wasn't ever a legitimate king he was a puppet that had been placed there by Rome and because of it he was out of touch with his own culture he had no sense of spirituality no communication with God and when some wise men showed up and inadvertently told him you're not even the king he said when you do find him tell me where he is so I can worship him too well Herod had some funny kind of worship it was the worship that uh, Jesus didn't need and that is why when the wise men found him and presented him with gold, frankincense and myrrh he had what he needed to get out of Dodge get as far away from Herod as you can until God deals with him Amen. you know there are some people that you can't get out of office right away there's some people you can't vote out, some people you cannot organize a campaign for recall, some people you can't impeach, but God knows how to deal with them. We saw some of that unfolding today and the Lord knew that for a season Jesus needed to get out of Israel though it is God's chosen people and nation but I don't want you there now I want you to go to Africa Jesus when he was in Africa uh, lived in an area which is now in one of the poorest sections of Cairo there's a church built over the house where Jesus stayed as a boy is called the Church of Saint Saugius some years ago I had the privilege of preaching at this church there's a marble pulpit with steps that lead up uh, to the top and the caretaker of this congregation in as much as I was the order of the day said to me well we don't allow preachers to wear shoes in our pulpit you gotta take your shoes off uh, to preach in this pulpit I believe it was the first barefoot sermon I ever preached in my life but I parked my shoes at the base of the pulpit and walked up those marble steps and had a, an affinity with Moses to whom God said put off your shoes from on your feet the ground you stand on is holy ground to preach a sermon over the house where Jesus lived as a boy awakened a level of consciousness in me that I had not experienced there to fall because it wasn't far from the pyramids and the great sphinx which means that Jesus was literally inundated with African culture and history as a child 
Our fastest years of development are during early childhood. Jesus then, as a child, was able to soak in the majesty and power of African influence and culture. It must have stayed with Jesus because he wouldn't even go to the cross of Calvary until a man from Africa arrived just in time to take the cross of Christ up Calvary's hill. It is impossible to separate Africa from the Bible. In fact, you wouldn't even have a Bible if it wasn't for Africa. Even though the present occupant of the White House refers to nations of our origins in a derogatory manner, the fact of the matter is God wanted Africa and the Bible to be intertwined so badly that he raised up a child that was destined to be killed in Africa and then made his mother put him in an ark of the bulrushes and hide him among the reeds of the Nile River. And while he was in that ark among the bulrushes, somehow God got in his voice and he opened his mouth and cried and scripture was fulfilled out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. God has ordained perfect praise. That praise charmed the daughter of Pharaoh who when she looked into the eyes and the soul of this child stood between her father's edict of death upon all the male children of Israel and this child and instead of her father killing this baby God fixed it that he raised this baby clothed him, housed him, educated him the best legal mind of his era. That person is the one that God used to give us a foundation for our Judeo-Christian heritage. A man born and named and raised in Africa. Moses is not a Hebrew name. It's not a Jewish name. It is an African name. It means literally because I drew him out of the Nile River, which is the longest river on the planet, 4,160 miles long. The Nile River is so long that it could not only cross from California to New Jersey, but you still have another thousand miles to go into the Atlantic Ocean because of its length. God used this African-born person to write the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Obviously, there must be a strong connection with Africa and the Bible because Jesus himself had to go to Africa. Paul himself was of African features. Acts 21 38 says that Paul spoke to the Roman captain in Greek and when he spoke to him in Greek the captain was so moved that he looked at Paul and asked him you mean you can speak Greek aren't you that Egyptian that led 4,000 men into the wilderness ain't nobody gonna call you an Egyptian unless you got some black features I went inside the pyramids while I was in Egypt and when I went in there I saw that even though the paintings upon the pyramid were over 4,000 years old, the brilliance of them was still there after four millennia. People with real curly hair, braids, thick lips, wide noses, olive skin. Even when we went inside the Egyptian museum and saw the mummies of King Ramses, it was obvious that they looked like we do. If a Roman captain says to Paul, aren't you that Egyptian? It's the equivalent of using the N-word. This man had African features. So not only is it that God uses an African-born man to write Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, but it uses another African man with features that betray his lineage 
to write Romans and 1st and 2nd Corinthians and Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. He writes to Timothy and Titus. It is even ascribed to him Hebrews and of course Philemon. Africa is all over and through the Bible. This brother with African features is the one who makes the case for the resurrection in 1st Corinthians 15. This whole chapter is about being sure that every believer in Jesus Christ gets it, the message of the resurrection. Because one of the problems of the first century church is dealing with heresy, false doctrines, false prophets, twisted teachings. You understand, everybody running around with a Bible in their hands are not of God. Jesus will say that in judgment people will come to him and they'll expect something from him. Uh, and then, of course, Jesus will let them know the only problem is I don't know you. And then they're going to try to remind them, well, don't you know that I, we the one cast out devils in your name, healed the sick in your name, we preach in your name. But Jesus will say, I don't know you. It ought to be illegal that you can take Jesus' intellectual property and don't even know Jesus for yourself. I believe that if you're going to preach Jesus, you ought to know Jesus. Uh, you know, you can be a Buddhist and never meet Buddha. Uh, you can be involved with Zoroastrianism and never meet Zoroaster. You can be involved in the Muslim religion and never meet Muhammad. But if you're going to be a Christian, you got to meet Jesus. It's not enough for you to meet the preacher. Not enough for you to know the deacon or some choir member. You got to know Jesus for yourself. Paul then in 1 Corinthians 15 makes the case that the resurrection is an issue that is not a take it or leave it one. Either you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ or you don't believe the gospel at all. I know that there are some people that say that it's not even necessary that we preach the resurrection. Because they say if people are talking about Jesus, if anybody remembers Jesus, that's enough. If anybody still sings about him, if anybody still discusses him, that's enough. Well, I strongly disagree. The reason why the church made it this far is because of the witness of the church. Now, in order to be a witness, uh, you have to have a Holy Ghost experience. Jesus said to his disciples, I've got to go, I'm going to leave, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to send you to the upper room. And don't you leave there until you have been endued with power from on high. You do realize that after Jesus was crucified, the church was in shambles. The church was on the ropes because Jesus died to zero members. The Bible says they all forsook him and fled. Jesus must have had zero members because on the first day of the week, the Sunday after the resurrection, wasn't nobody having service? Wasn't no preaching going on the Sunday morning that should have been the easiest Sunday morning to preach. Why is it that nobody was talking about the resurrected Christ on the day that Jesus actually got up from the dead because every preacher he had was on strike? reason why they won't strike because they didn't believe he could possibly rise from the dead. And I know that it may be easier for us to embrace this than them because there is a certain uh, kind of post-traumatic stress disorder that accompanies witnessing something like the crucifixion of Christ. You can't be close to that kind of leader and not experience post-traumatic stress disorder when he's killed. In fact, even those who were around Martin Luther King when he was killed April the 4th, 1968 can never get that 
out of their heads the fact that the assassin was programmed to be there in league with people on the inside you do realize what no accident or coincidence that that man knew where to be because the FBI had files on Martin Luther King that are thicker than you can imagine. Ain't no way in the world you gonna keep files on somebody like that and don't know nothing about his assassination. Uh, you know, sometimes you need to remind yourself where you live. You ain't in heaven yet. You still in a hellish place called America. Jesus was the one who was crucified an excruciating death bones out of joint flesh ripped from his body beaten with an instrument called the Roman scourge a wooden handle with 13 leather straps extending from it with pieces of metal sharp as razors ripping flesh from his body his rib cage is exposed even the hymn that Jesus sings from the cross exposes the nature of the suffering that he endured Jesus must have been some kind of worshiper to sing a hymn on a cross who else do you know that's got that much grace in them that with nails in their hands and feet thorns upon their brow ribcage exposed that he still has enough left to sing a hymn what you gonna sing Jesus I'm gonna sing hymn number 22 from the book of Psalm my God my God why hast thou forsaken me I believe that wherever you are you ought to sing something sing until you get some renewal sing until a spark lights a fire in your bones sing until God gives you grace to press on Jesus knew what nobody else was going to sing so he had to sing for himself you know some things you got to do for yourself even the saying is God helps those that help themselves it might sound slightly insensitive but there's something God ain't gonna do for you some things you gotta do for yourself God will not make up your mind for you you the one gotta make up your own mind God will not confess twice for you you the one has to make a confession of faith you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead God's not going to wash your face you got to do that God's not going to get up and brush your teeth for you he gave you new mercies compassions and loving kindness you ought to do something you might be able to say man did that just say hmm even when you come to church, God ain't going to do everything for you. Yes, the Holy Ghost is here. The Bible is here. Songs of Zion are here. But some folk act like they're doing God a favor to come to church. Well, I don't know why you don't feel like that when you go to all these other places. Are you doing God a favor coming to church? Who are you doing a favor when you go to the bar, when you go to happy hour? Who are you doing a favor when you go to the casino or to the boats? I believe you doing yourself a favor when you come to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. When you come into God's presence, then you have brought yourself into a place where miracles happen, where sins are forgiven, where the blood of Jesus covers your life. Every time you come into God's house, you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because he is is good his mercy endureth forever why don't you look at somebody and say you're doing yourself a favor yes Jesus was executed as a criminal and the disciples saw it that meant that they had to deal with post-traumatic stress disorder they didn't have enough to preach that Sunday morning they didn't have enough to talk about their faith in him because they thought it was over just like we thought it was over when King was killed in 68 the fact of the matter is you don't lose a leader and keep on going as though nothing happened even if you don't like the leader the leader got something you ain't got I dare you to shout. Run down the aisle on that. There's something God only gives the leader. Uh, even with Moses and Aaron, Aaron was a better speaker than Moses. But he wasn't the leader. 
Aaron was more articulate than Moses. Aaron was more popular than Moses. But Aaron never had one single original idea. Everything that God had to say, he said it to Moses. You only get one leader at a time. The disciples experienced this desensitizing event, the crucifixion of Christ, which meant that they had to literally be rewired for ministry. Jesus had to come back and start from scratch. And that is something that is known as strategic withdrawal. Whenever you've been through something that has literally turned you inside out, whenever your faith has been shaken to the core, whenever whatever you believed in has been sacrificed, you need a strategic withdrawal kind of moment so God can rewire you, so God can speak to you again, so that God can take you to another place in him. God has to put the praise back in your spirit. He has to put the hallelujah back in your soul. He has to put the yes Lord back in your heart. God sometimes has to bring us back and rewire us. That's the reason why Jesus had to show up after the crucifixion. If he hadn't showed up and been seen by witnesses, there never would have been a church. You understand, that is why Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church. I can't build it till after I get out of hell. I can't build it till after I rise from the dead. I can't build it until after I defeat sin, death, hell, and the grave. Anytime you bad enough to whoop sin, death, hell, and the grave, you somebody. Why don't you give Jesus some praise in here tonight? Don't you know that's a gang fight? Jesus realized you can't whoop one of them and not whoop all of them. Don't come up here thinking you're going to whoop sin and you're not going to have to tangle with sin's partner. You see, sin has a partner called death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And death got a partner called the grave. The grave has a partner called hell. Jesus, if you're going to pick a fight with sin, you just well get ready to whoop every last one of us. You got to whoop sin, death, hell, and the grave. Jesus said not only will I whoop you but I'll whoop you with my hands nail I'll whoop you with my feet nail I don't even need all my brain to whoop you put thorns in my bra I'll still whip you Jesus rose from the dead but he had to rewire the disciples he had to reorient them he had to recommission them because they were in no mood for preaching don't you know you need some holy ghost help when it comes to preaching because the enemy will mess with you when it comes to preaching time uh, you, that might be an inside word. I know you pastors know what I'm talking about. Things can be calm all of the time, but when it's time for you to proclaim the word, that's when the enemy puts his demons on high alert status. Whenever Jesus got into preaching, he had to encounter all kinds of supernatural opposition. Don't you know that just about every time Jesus went to church, a fight broke out anyway? You know that, right? Even when he went to his hometown synagogue in Nazareth, Jesus read the scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, gave the scroll back to the minister, sat down and said, this scripture is fulfilled in your very eyes. They got so angry that Jesus had the nerve to claim that he was the fulfillment of scripture. That even though he was from their town, they pushed him to the brow of the hill to kill him. But if God wants you to live, even your haters can't kill you. If God wants you to live, even your enemies can't destroy you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. Don't you know when you get in the valley of the shadow of death, you better have a hoop with you. You better have a holler with you. The Bible doesn't say, though I put that holler up front. Yay, though I walk. 
That means death, I'm coming through there. Because I've got something stronger than death. I've got something stronger than the grave. Because Jesus whooped every last one of them in the gang. He whooped sin simply by being born, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Which meant that he was born without sin. Jesus was not born because a man loved a woman. He was born because God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life Jesus simply by be born of the Holy Spirit that means he did not inherit man's fallen condition if Jesus had been born because of a man and a woman getting together he would have had the seed of sin in him but because the Bible said in Genesis 3.15 the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head that means that a woman shall compass a man God sent the Holy Spirit use the Virgin Mary to bring forth an incorruptible Christ not one drop of blood passed from Mary's body into Jesus the blood type of the child is determined by the father and that meant that the God the father had this incorruptible divine blood type in Jesus a blood that reaches to the highest mountain a blood that flows to the lowest valley a blood that gives me strength from day to day in fact there's still a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins when sinners are plunged beneath that flood they lose all their guilty stain Jesus sent it by being born of the Holy Spirit had already whipped sin for he was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin no gal found in his mouth then not only then did he whip sin but if you didn't sin you didn't already whip death the wages of sin is death you ain't got no sin in you and on you death has no claim on your life that's why Jesus said no man can take my life when I get ready I'll lay it down and then I'll take it up again Jesus because he was born sinless has already defeated sin has already defeated death and that means I gotta take this show on the road in order to defeat the other two enemies in order to defeat the grave my body has got to get in there you can't defeat something you ain't never came in contact with I gotta get in the grave if I'm gonna whoop it I gotta go down in hell if I'm gonna defeat hell the Bible says thou will not leave my soul in hell well you can't leave something somewhere you ain't never been hello and that's why he had to go into hell in order to fulfill scripture Jesus needed to go to hell because he's the one that made hell in the first place the devil didn't create hell in fact I'm trying to figure out has the devil ever built anything it's not in his job description to be a builder he's the president of the wrecking crew he's a destroyer deceiver confuser he's a fighter a hater but I ain't never seen him build anything constructive his job is to try to tear you down and tear down what you build Jesus is the builder come on help me give God some praise in here tonight because Jesus defeated sin because he defeated death because he defeated hell and the grave the Bible says of him in the second chapter of Colossians that he made a show of his enemies he triumphed over them principalities Jesus had a parade in the supernatural inasmuch as Colossians 2 and 9 says the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily everything that the Father is is in Jesus everything that the Holy Ghost is is in Jesus nobody knows how to put a package together like God can God put that package together so well that Jesus said when you've seen me you've seen the Father because I'm in the Father and the Father is in me that means that God is the only Father who has a son who's the same age as his daddy can nobody else see that but God that's why you 
You name your son Junior or the second or the third or Boo Boo because your son is not on the level that you are. But Jesus is the equal of his father. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So what you need to understand about Jesus, Jesus ain't Boo Boo. Jesus is the equal of the father. In fact, the Bible throws us a curve and helps us to realize not only is he the equal, but the Father did something radical. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Father exalted him. Well, if you are already equal and you get exalted, maybe you ought to think about that. You are already equal, but you got exalted. That means your name is above Yahweh. Your name is above El Shaddai. Your name is above Elohim. No other name is on the level of the name of Jesus. When we get to judgment, you're not going to bow at the name Father. You're not going to bow at the name Elohim. You're not going to bow at the name Mechadishkum or Rohi or Sitkanu. You're going to bow at the name Jesus because every name is under the name Jesus. I wish I had some help up in here. I know it's a little help. You see, if Jesus had not risen from the dead, then there would be nothing to preach about. Everything is based upon one event, and that is the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And this is the make or break event. That is why Paul uses this term in verse 58 of 1 Corinthians 15 called therefore. He doesn't just say be steadfast, unmovable. He says therefore. Because Paul realizes you can't be steadfast if you don't have therefore. You can't be unmovable if you don't have therefore you can't always abound in the work of the Lord if you don't have therefore so the question becomes what's therefore there for the reason why therefore is there is because the resurrection is the foundation upon which the church is built the church is built on the fact of the resurrected Christ and anytime you can come back from the crucifixion anytime you can come back from the dead come back from the grave even come back from hell you are a force to be reckoned with and if you are witness to the resurrection of Christ there is no demon that can shut you down there is no enemy that can stop your advance and that is why the church had to have some witnesses Jesus said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you then you shall be my witnesses why wouldn't Jesus let us witness for him before the Holy Ghost why wouldn't Jesus let us witness for him before we receive power well go back to resurrection Sunday when Jesus rose from the dead and not one preacher had a word to say not one apostle had a sermonette in fact if it hadn't been for some women who were coming to take care of unfinished business there wouldn't have been any news about the resurrected Christ but thank God that these women said we've got to finish what we started we couldn't do for Jesus what we wanted to do on Friday because the Sabbath begins at sunset on Friday and this wasn't just any other Sabbath this was the Passover so because the Sun is setting we're gonna have to leave Jesus the way he is but we're coming back at the dawning of the week because we have unfinished business every now and then you need to take care of unfinished business sometimes you can't get on with the work until you take care of 
unfinished business even uncle sam won't let you keep operating your business if you haven't paid your taxes uncle sam will tell you we'll put a padlock on your door unless you take care of unfinished business even when you are not able to get along then you have unfinished business don't think that you can just come and shout anyhow and you holding evil in your heart come and minister anyhow and you haven't forgiven your don't forgive others God won't forgive you everybody needs to deal with unfinished business that's why God gives you a new start every morning I'm not gonna let you take from yesterday the problems and burdens into today I'm gonna forgive you every morning I'm gonna give you brand new mercies new compassions and love loving kindness whatever you did yesterday God says I'm gonna give you a new start today whatever you did yesterday I'm gonna let it go into the file but I'm gonna give you a new ignition on the day brand new mercies brand new compassion loving kindness to give you a jump start on the day by the time you get to another morning the world has turned all the way around for the earth has a solid content of 264 billion cubic feet the earth is 25,000 miles around in order to get you to a good morning God has to take this big ball of 264 billion cubic feet and turn it all the way around just to get you a good morning he has to let the Sun come up all over again he has to put you in subconsciousness he has to put you in an altered state of mind shut down your metabolism shut down your worries even shut down the kitchen you see some people came fast consciously so God said I'm gonna make you fast subconsciously everybody fast all night long everybody fast when you go to sleep you can't cook bacon while you sleep you can't make a cup of coffee while you sleep you can't flip pancakes while you sleep if you won't fast while you are conscious God said I'm gonna make you fast while you're subconscious and while you are fasting I'm gonna deal with your spirit and deal with your mind yeah oh yes don't you remember Joseph said I'm not gonna marry Mary because I've never touched her and she's having somebody's child but the problem with Joseph he laid down and went to sleep and when he went to sleep God put him in another state of consciousness God talked to him and said Joseph I know Mary's having my baby that's why you can't name him Joseph the second you can't name him Joseph jr. his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins he's Emmanuel God with us Joseph fasted that night Joseph had a talk with God that night when the morning came wedding bells were ringing when the morning came Joseph had a new outlook on things no wonder Jesus invites you come unto me oh, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and oh, learn of me. Learn 
how to lean and depend on Jesus. Learn how to wait on Jesus. Learn how to trust him. Oh, learn how to put your life in his hand. Say it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, yes. Jesus will yoke you up. Jesus will lock you in the yoke. You can't leave even though you got mad. You can't leave even though you've been talked about. You can't leave even though you've been upset. You're locked in the yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Oh, yes. In the yoke, you learn his purpose, you learn his will. In the yoke, you learn how to worship, you learn how to surrender. In the yoke, you learn how to praise him, you learn how to thank him. In the yoke, you learn how to shout, shout unto God, shout because he's a way maker. Shout because he'll fight your battle. Oh, shout because he's real. Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me the therefore. The resurrection means God will bring you back. He'll bring you back from trouble. He'll bring you back from sickness, bring you back from disaster, God will bring you back, even if burdens get heavy, storm life or raging, God will bring you back, say yes, I know you gotta cry sometimes, I know you gotta hurt sometimes, I know you gotta suffer sometimes, but when God brings you out you can tell somebody baby I'm back he brought me all the way he brought me when I couldn't bring myself he brought me when tears were in my eyes oh he brought me yeah oh yes he brought me Thank God he brought me. Come on and praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. He brought me. The door is open. Let everybody stand. The resurrection means God will bring you back. And so you can never count the church out. Even if we go through lean times, even if we go through hard times, even if we have disagreements, even if we fall out, you can never count the church out because we got resurrection all over us. Paul said that I may know him, fellowship of his sufferings, being conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I don't know about you, but I'm a resurrection believer. And because I'm a resurrection believer, I know that whatever it is that I face, God's going to bring me through it. That's why the Bible said, thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Well, let me hear you say victory. victory. Come on and say it again. Victory. victory. That's why we up in here tonight. We have the victory. Yes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I want you to join hands with somebody as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you tonight. We praise you tonight. We celebrate your mercy. We thank you for your sufficient grace. Because we didn't win the victory ourselves. You won it, but you gave it to us. You're the one that died. You're the one who was nailed in your hands and feet. You're the one who was buried in the grave. You're the one that got up 
on the third day morning you won the victory but you shared it with me thank you for giving me your victory thank you for giving me your joy thank you for giving me your peace you want it but you gave it to me least I can do is say thank you Jesus thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace thank you for your Holy Spirit thank you for your anointing that destroys the yoke we have the victory Come on and shake that hand that you're holding. Tell that person, we have the victory. That's why right. tell somebody else, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Come on and clap your hands. The door is open. Maybe somebody here tonight wants to experience the victory. If you're here, all you got to do is trust Him with all of your heart. Put your faith in Jesus. He never fails. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He promised, Lo, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. Will you come tonight? The door is open. Christ has given us the victory. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, go and rally, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the way of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not.
want us to be the ones to Get an answer, get an answer, get an answer. Come on, get an answer, get an answer, get an answer. If they're not saved, you can evangelize right now. Come on, ask the person next to you, do you have a church home? Ask them, do you go to church on a regular basis? Do you have a home team? If they say no, I don't even know what a home team is. Tell them they can join this team. Tell them you'll come with them. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves as such as the man of son. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's thank God for Jesus. Let's thank God for Bishop Dr. J. Lewis Phelps. Come on, let's love on the man of God. Come on, if God has spoken to you, you ought to give God some praise. Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on. Let's really give God some glory. He has poured out his heart to us and everything that God has given. Listen, tonight we want to, as we move forward into our offering, Bless you. We thank God for everything that has been spoken and preached. And even today, uh, God has been putting our congregation in the spotlight even on today. Uh, and we thank God for what he's doing. Come on, tell somebody he's a behind-the-scenes God, too. He's a behind-the-scenes God, too. We've been asking, you've heard what we've been asking, that we, a special gift, and we know everybody's not able, but nobody knows your business like you know your business. And so we've been asking that if there were some, you heard the pastors asking uh, for 30 people to uh, give $100 this week for this 71st church anniversary revival. Not because uh, we want to keep it, but we want to be a blessing uh, to Bishop Feldman. Let me tell you something. As long as I've known him, I've never heard, even when he's come to us, he's never said, I only come for this amount. And so he's my pastor, and your pastor is asking you to share so that we can be sure that we meet our goal. Amen? Amen. You can give through Givelify. If you got, if you came with $100 tonight, why don't you just bring that to me? I know sometimes I'm not going to call your name. Just bring it to me just right from where you are. You can use Givelify as well. I just gave up my $100, another $100 uh, tonight. All right. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for a young person coming. Amen. Come on, quickly, quickly. Just bring it to me. Bring it right here. Thank you so much. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. Come on, let's thank God. Anybody else? Come on, let's thank God. That's three of us right there. Anybody else? Come on, let's thank God. I know you're praying at your seat. 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 Thank you so much. That's a Kalamazoo connection there, y'all. Amen. Come on, let's thank God, y'all. Let's thank God. Right here, Sister Banks. Right here, Sister Banks. Come on. 
Amen. That's all right. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Sister Banks. Anybody else? Come on. You're praying. You're praying. Amen. Amen. This has helped us to reach our goal. Amen. Anybody else? Come on. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. I see President. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. Uh, come on. Let's encourage y'all. Let's encourage. Thank you, Brother President. Come on, let's encourage y'all. Let's encourage. Come on, tell your neighbor, ain't no shame in giving. Amen. Old church said you can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try. Amen. The more you give, the more what? He gives to you. So what they say, just keep on giving. Because it's really true. That what? You can't beat God giving. But tell your neighbor, it's good to try. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Amen. Everybody's standing, if you will. Our ushers are getting in place to help lead you from the rear. We've asked everyone uh, for thirty dollars. Just hold a second. We're going to pray. We've asked everyone for thirty dollars in this offering, uh, and we've asked all of our members. We haven't asked you to give every night, but we've asked every member of our church uh, for just thirty dollars. Amen. Come on, tell your neighbor just thirty dollars. Amen. And so, come on, let's give God praise for that. Amen. And uh, it's about us being blessed so that we can keep on doing the work of God. Amen. Come on, everybody's head bowed, eyes closed. God, we thank you for uh, this opportunity to sow into what we know to be good ground. We've experienced, God, your power and glory, and we know that it is good and proper for us to give financially to advance the kingdom of our Savior, and to give for the furtherance of the gospel, that it might go around the world that every creature might hear the gospel. We thank you, God, for this church. We thank you for this evangelist, God. And we just thank you for an opportunity to give to you. We pray, God, that as we give on tonight, that you give back some 30, some 60, some 100, even a thousandfold for those who step forth. We thank you for our obedience, God, and our faith, God, to plant in good ground receive an increase. We thank you now. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're in the hands of our ushers. They're going to lead you from the back. Amen. You're going to, this section will turn to your right, this section to your left, and they'll lead you from the rear. Amen. Thank you so much. Rejoice and sing You are Lord of everything I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord at all times sanctify it right now. Let it be used for your glory and honor, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together. Amen. I will bless the Lord. 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 I will bless the Lord.
let's put our hands together one more time. Let's thank God. Amen. I know the hour actually is really not late, and so we thank God. So thank you for your patience. We want to hear uh, final remarks uh, from our uh, evangelists this week. Listen, we want to make sure, I don't want to forget anybody. Let's thank God for our sacred security ministry. They've been on the lot every night tonight. Come on, let's this week. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for our doorkeepers, our media ministry. Come on, let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for our worship team, the Levites of Rowan Valley. Let's thank God for our band. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. They've been ministering all week. Let's thank God for Sister Reddick and our health and wellness ministry. Come on, let's thank God for our deacons and trustees. Everybody's been serving. Come on, look at somebody tell them, I thank God for you. Amen. I thank God for you. Let's thank God for the Growing Valley Baptist Church. Amen. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, this has been a wonderful week. I want to remind you on Friday from 6 p.m. to 7, or 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., the party's going down. Don't forget, this is the Growth Experience Worship Center, this building. The building across the way is the Walter E. Forte Jr. Education Building. On Friday night, we will not be on this side of our campus. We will be across on the, across the wall, right next door, 1821 West Lancaster Boulevard. Uh, we will be there. The party's going now. We'll have music. We'll be dancing. We'll be playing games. I think, Sister Brown, where are you? We'll be line dancing. We're going to be having a good time. It's our birthday party, so we want to enjoy ourselves. Amen. Yes. Bring family members. Bring friends. Friends. We're going to be in Bethlehem Hall. The kitchen will be open. We'll be in Bethlehem Hall. One of the reasons why we don't want to be over here is don't forget every Friday night from 7.30 or 8 o'clock to 9.30, the AA meeting is across the way. And so there's 120 of them that come. And so they'll be on this side. We'll be next door. But raise your hand if you have yet to be across the wall. Raise your hand if you're a member of our church. You've yet to be there. Amen. So we need you to join us especially. Amen. But it's also a good time to evangelize and let other people know that we have fun. Amen. You can be saved and have fun. Amen. So we want to do that. And on Saturday, listen, we're asking everyone to be here for one hour. Everybody say one hour. Uh, one hour of prayer. We're asking everybody to be here for one hour of prayer on Saturday from 9 a.m. Uh, to 10 a.m. Now, I got a special announcement. We thank God you all be praying that nothing else comes into his schedule. Uh, but um, don't forget, next Wednesday we begin, uh, we actually have our second First Wednesday lecture series. And today I had about a four hour meeting with Deputy uh, Mayor Doris and uh, Mayor R. Rex Paris. And as long as nothing comes up, listen, as crazy as this may sound, uh, while we were at his office when we got there, uh, the security was there. And, in an interesting way that I had not seen before. And our mayor has been receiving death threats. Uh, someone has literally said that they're coming after him. And so uh, we want to be praying for him, amen. amen. It does not matter what our, uh, our uh, political uh, thoughts are. The Bible instructs us to pray uh, for those who are in authority. So the least we can do is pray, amen. Uh, he is scheduled to be with us on next Wednesday at 7 p.m. We'll be meeting in Fuller Chapel next door. And so we, he's going to talk to us. I'm going to interview him, and we're going to get a chance to ask questions, amen. And so we want to be out for that, and then we'll get back to our uh, Wednesday night, our Word uh, First, um, or rather, our Word Up Wednesdays. Amen. So it's continuing in our calendar for what we've been doing. Again, we'll be in Fuller Chapel. So on Friday we'll be in Bethlehem Hall. On Saturday we will be right in here, and then on next Wednesday we will be in Bethlehem. Uh, I'm sorry, in Fuller Chapel, which is next door. And please uh, don't forget. Worship on Sunday, 8 a.m. worship in uh, the fellowship hall, and then our 11 o'clock worship. It is the first Sunday, so we'll be celebrating uh, the Lord's Supper. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's welcome back uh, Bishop Felton. He's going to give us closing remarks and benediction. Come on, let's thank God for him. Amen? God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Johnson. and. The Growing Valley family, we are grateful to God for his tremendous favor upon us. Amen. The Growing Valley Baptist Church in Lancaster, California, on Lancaster Boulevard, six acres of land, even the mayor is coming. Now, I am a firm believer in the separation of church and state, and we are separated but we're not divorced. 
And since we're not divorced, we still have visitation rights. Amen. So next Wednesday will be the visitation right. God some pray. Look at God bringing the man to the church. And so we thank God for what he's doing with this wonderful congregation. We appreciate each one of you. Thank you for the strong bond that we share. Uh, we have a Philadelphian here, Brother Stan McLean, and so you have to excuse him because he has an Eagles jacket, and uh, you know, you may not like it out here, but when he come to Philadelphia, he got on the right attire. <laughs> so we love you, Growing Valley. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for so graciously smiling upon us. We pray your continued peace and prosperity upon this church as it lives up to its name the growing valley baptist church let this church continue to grow by leaps and bounds because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto you be glory in jesus name amen and amen God bless you.